This is the new Marshall Emberton. It's Marshall's newest and smallest portable Bluetooth speaker, which I think looks great, has amazing build quality, sounds really good, and it has really impressive battery life as well. But I just wish Marshall did a little more to help justify the Emberton's very premium price. Now, the Emberton retails for $150, which is pretty pricey for a 20 watt speaker like this, because the 30 watt Sony XP33 has a retail price of $150, and the 30 watt JBL Charge 4 has a retail price of $180, but it routinely likes to go on sale for $150 as well. And for comparison's sake, the JBL Flip 5 has a retail price of $120, and the Sony XP23 has a retail price of $100. Both 20 watt speakers, mind you. But one way that I feel that the Ember 10 justifies its price is through its build quality and design. Nonetheless, if you want to pick the speaker up, it'll be linked down below. So first off, let's talk about the speaker's build quality because it's very impressive. Now, on the front and back, we've got this wire grill, and the rest of the speaker is wrapped in this hardened rubber, which can easily take a beating from constant bumps and scrapes, and the speaker is IPX7 rated, meaning that it isn't afraid of water. But, this rubber still has a very luxurious soft touch feel to it. And then on top, of we've got these two buttons that just have great tactile feedback all around. Now, the left smaller button is used for pairing, and the main center button is the one that you use to play, pause, skip through your music, and to adjust the volume. But the very important thing here is that this button has a very satisfying click to it. And finally, when it comes to design, this is a good looking speaker, period. Marshall's timeless design is going to continue to look good for the long run, and I think this speaker looks much better than the mostly plastic and fabric-covered speakers that are super prevalent right now. But in general, the Emberton is a fairly small speaker, but it's also surprisingly dense, weighing in at 697 grams. Now, when it comes to tech specs, this speaker charges via a USB-C port as it should. And when it comes to battery life, this speaker has an advertised battery life of 20 hours, which is above average for a speaker of this size. But that 20 hour battery life is for when this speaker is playing at 50% volume. Real dual use with this speaker playing at 80% volume, this speaker's been good for around 12 hours of playback time for me. And at max volume, for me, this speaker's been good for around 6.5 hours of playback time, which is not bad at all. Combined with the fact that this speaker has fast charging, where if you were to plug it in for 20 minutes from a dead battery, it's going to get you 5 hours of playback time, this little speaker really is a road warrior. But unfortunately, something to keep in mind here is that this USB-C port is strictly used for charging. You can't use this USB-C port as a wired connection, and you also can't use it to charge your own devices. And unfortunately, this speaker also doesn't have an audio jack. So the only way that you can use this speaker is wirelessly. Now personally, I don't mind not having an audio jack on a speaker of this size, but I do feel it would have been nice to have and it is something to keep in mind depending on your needs or setup. So like I said, you can only use this speaker wirelessly. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, this speaker is using Bluetooth 5.0 and it can be connected to two devices at the same time, so you and a friend can both be DJ. But when it comes to audio codecs, this speaker is strictly using SBC. But more importantly, when it comes to watching movies or videos on your phone, this speaker does have a zero latency across the board, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device, and even if it's connected to two devices at the same time. But now let's talk about speaker setups. The Marshall Emberton has a dual driver and dual passive radiator setup. Now, one driver and one passive radiator shoots out the front, and the other driver and other radiator shoots out the back. So this speaker is really going to sound its best if you have it placed close up against the wall so that the sound that it's shooting out the back has something to bounce off of. Now personally, I really like this setup because this speaker does a really good job of evenly filling a room with music. And if you're going to use it outdoors, you are going to get a performance bump out of it if you place it up against the wall. 
But something to keep in mind is that this is a 20 watt speaker. And like I mentioned at the top of this video, for the same price, you can either get an XP33 or Charge 4, which are both 30 watt speakers, which means they are going to get louder and sound fuller. But so that you can hear for yourself, we're going to jump into a sound test. So like you may have just heard, the 20 watt Emberton does a really good job of holding its own against the 30 watt XP33 and Charge 4. But ultimately, yes, both the XP33 and Charge 4 have richer and deeper bass and they also manage to get louder than the Emberton. But with that assigned sound signature wise, the Emberton does have a slightly brighter EQ, which does bring the vocals out a little more. But something that I did notice was that the soundstage on the Emberton was very similar to that of the XP33, which I find to be pretty impressive. And even though this is a 20 watt speaker, the bass on the Emberton can be felt a decent amount when used indoors. And since this speaker does have a rear firing passive radiator, you can always up the amount of bass on the speaker if you place it up against the wall. Now, even though in general the Emberton is a good sounding speaker with a good amount of bass, a wide sound stage, and a sound signature that puts an emphasis on the vocals, unfortunately, you can't change the EQ on the speaker directly. Unlike Marshall's other speakers, the Emberton doesn't have bass or treble control knobs. And unfortunately, the speaker also doesn't connect to Marshall's speaker app. So you're stuck with the stock EQ on the speaker. Now, I think this is unfortunate because there are plenty of other speakers out there that do connect to an app and have a customizable EQ. Now, I think this speaker sounds just fine and should be able to handle any genre of music. But if you're someone that might want a more neutral or warmer EQ, then you might want to look elsewhere. But finally, let's talk about speaker pairing protocols. Unfortunately, Marshall doesn't really have one for their portable Bluetooth speakers. Now, there are Marshall speakers out there that you can pair up and have them play music in sync, but they're really just using Google Assistant or Alexa. With the Emberton, you can't pair it up to another Emberton, or you can't pair it up to a Stockwell or an Acton. If you get an Emberton, it's because you just strictly want one speaker. Because for comparison's sake, with either Sony or JBL speakers, you can pair them up to one another. 
So, for example, if you were to get a Sony XB23, you can always pair it up to a Sony XB33. Or if you were to get a JBL Flip 5, you can pair it up to a JBL Pulse 4. So what I'm getting at here is that if you were to either go with a Sony or JBL speaker instead of Marshall speaker, you have the option to grow your collection of speakers and have the capability of syncing them up to one another so that you can cover a larger area with music with multiple speakers. Or if let's say your buddy were to get a speaker and then you were to get a speaker of the same brand, then you could pair them up to one another. So with all that being said, the Marshall Emberton is a really good sounding little speaker that looks great, is super rugged, and has an impressive battery life. But it does command a premium and it can be a little hard to justify. At $150, if you're concerned about sound, then you are better off going with a 30 watt speaker, like either the XB33 or Charge 4. Personally, I would go with the XB33 because of the wide soundstage and customizable EQ. And it also has a light feature, which is also nice. But also, you can't pair the Emberton to any other speakers, which is increasingly becoming a more and more common feature. But with those gripes aside, the Emberton does make a case for itself. This speaker has great build quality, but it's also super rugged. And personally, I think this speaker looks a lot better sitting on your desk than these other fabric and plastic speakers. And if battery life is a big concern for you, then this speaker is a good option. Because real world use, this speaker is good for around 12 hours of playback time with the volume set at 80%. And even though this speaker is tiny, the Emberton does a really good job of evenly blanketing a room with music thanks to its forwards and backwards firing transducers. And if you were to place the speaker up against a wall, then you are going to get a performance boost out of it. So overall, I like the Emberton, but this is a speaker that I would rather wait for it to go on sale. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any other products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below. And you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.